My background is mostly American literature, but I've look, been looking at experimental writing in various forms, and when you start in one country, you very quickly see how it relates to work going on in other countries. So the Futurists was just one strand of, of, of a lot of uh, experimental work. The idea behind this project was, well, how can we actually um, uh, uh, start bringing some of the technologies that they might have thought about um, but maybe not actually developed or not developed to their full potential that they perhaps imagined that they could. How do we bring that to life? The main research that I've been doing over the last few years is to do with the relationship between sounds and objects. And um, so it's a bit like the idea of visual music where you're taking a sound and you're trying to representing it as a shape on a screen or something, but you know, in three dimensions essentially. So. Um, and, and obviously this has a three-dimensional aspect, but there's also that idea of matching the sounds and the animations. One of the aspects of my research is looking at abstract versus representational art in video games. So this project uses video game technology, but one of the challenges was to represent the sounds in an abstract way. What I've made in terms of animations are really a response to what we came up with with the audio, the soundtrack. So in the sense that the, the futurists would have had, you know, they liked the sounds of machinery, um, the city and uh, war of course, you know, and, and they had this idea of the sounds that were the sounds of the coming 20th century, you know, so this is a hundred years ago. And looking at the sounds for this piece, it was interesting to say, well, what will be the sounds of the 21st century? You know, what will be the sounds of, um, of the future? And so we were looking at sounds like renewable energy, electric cars, and um, uh, Wi-Fi data, of course, you know, that kind of thing. I feel the audio and the visuals really work together with this. And the other factor is the interaction. And this kind of brings it closer to games in some way and actually brings an element of play into the whole thing. And that's really important to the whole, the whole procedure. We had talked a lot about virtual reality originally and that kind of missed that angle. And I think when we, when we kind of went for augmented reality after some research into the two technologies, we, um, we really found that was appealing and as a kind of installation artwork, that would, that would be more beneficial to what we're trying to achieve. Well, I thought it was like, it, it was very original because you are not used to uh, put some glasses and to see like different uh, things that you see usually in television or some random films, like for example, I don't know if you can say attractive, but you, it, it incites you to do this thing because yeah, it's like different original and and most of the people like new things, so yeah, I think it was really good. I think it's really interesting the fact that you could kind of look at it, different objects and it would bring up this kind of image and, yeah, and yeah, it would bring out colours. When you're doing it, it's, it's, it's kind of sort of fun because you're manipulating things. I felt quite enjoyable to try to figure out what was coming from like, if I had like different patterns from each cube and like if I look at from different angles, what results I could have. Very, it was very strange. Afterwards, taking the thing off, it, was, it felt very kind of sort of lightheaded and slightly kind of sort of whoa, disconnected from reality at that point. What really surprised me about it was actually how similar, in some senses, it was to the original. Uh, noise tuners, the uh, original Intona Rumore devised by Luigi Russola, where you had all of these noises interacting with each other. Um, 
I think perhaps the difference is that these were a lot more harmonious. They, they made actually a kind of uh, a, a, a quite, a, quite, a, quite a pleasing, ambient uh, sort of experience. Um, that was exciting. That was unexpected. And uh, um, just how all these multiple images and sounds interacted with each other, um, I, I think that was the most pleasantly surprising experience. <laughs> People have been, I think today, they haven't quite known what to make of it. And I think that's a great thing. Um, to, you know, for people to, uh, to, to come across something that they can't really easily categorize, and it makes them want to sit there and play and turn these things around. And, and you know, and I think that's, that's a great success, actually. It's early days for both virtual reality and augmented reality. I think that people are still experimenting and still pushing the boundaries and that's why doing research into this area is, is really fascinating. It's quite magical actually when, the, when you're looking at a cube and you know that cube is in front of you, you know what it looks like in real life and then all of a sudden these animations burst out of it and it starts making sounds. It's, yeah, it's quite a magical experience.